Hello, my name is Bhavya Bhushan, and today I will be presenting my project on arabidomycercoma and the unfolding protein response. Throughout this presentation, I will be walking us through the background, what is RMS and why is it important, the purpose of the study, the methods that we used, the statistical analysis, the results obtained, and finally, the conclusions and the future study plans that involve this project. Before I begin, I would like to mention that throughout this presentation, I will be referring to rhabdomyosarcoma as RMS, alveolar rhabdomyosarcoma as ARMS, and the unfolded protein response as the UPR. So to begin, what is rhabdomyosarcoma? Rhabdomyosarcoma is a muscle-derived tumor. It is the most common pediatric soft tissue sarcoma, and it represents about 5% of all childhood cancers. The subtypes of RMS include embryonal RMS, pleomorphic RMS, spindle RMS, and alveolar RMS. Our main focus throughout this presentation will be on alveolar RMS. So what is alveolar RMS? Alveolar RMS is an invasive subtype, and it is vastly suffered by adolescents and young adults. It is named alveolar due to the fact that it resembles the alveoli of the lungs, which can be seen through this image right here. So why is it important that we study this and we invest our time and resources into it? Because to this day, chemotherapy is the only viable option treatment for ARMS. And recent studies suggest that the incident rate of RMS is higher than 250 to 350 cases per year in Canada itself. So the endoplasmic reticulum is the main organelle in the cell that is associated with a proper folding and maturation of proteins. This image right here displays an endoplasmic reticulum in a cell in action. So sometimes what happens is protein folding goes wrong and there's a misfolded protein. This misfolded protein can then cause a stress in the endoplasmic reticulum. And in order to, re in order to respond to this stressful stimuli, the endoplasmic reticulum then initiates a series of adaptive mechanisms. And this is what is called the unfolded protein response. The unfolded protein response as shown in this image has three arms, namely PERC, ATF6, and IRE1. We did focus on IRE1 arm mainly due to the sole reason that IRE1 arm is highly involved in cell survival. The IRE1 arm um, essentially tells cells to survive or it encourages cell survival. PERC, on the other hand, encourages cell death. So the purpose of our study was to see if UPR is correlated with ARMS. We investigated the correlation of IRE1 and its downstream proteins, BIP, also known as GRP78, and XBP1S with that of ARMS. In order to carry out um, this investigation, we used two main methods, namely tissue microarray or TMA and immunohistochemistry or IHC. So we assessed human samples with the help of tissue microarray for BIP, IRE1, and XBP1S. Tissue microarray consists of paraffin blocks in which up to 200 separate tissue cores are assembled in an array fashion to allow multiple histological analysis. As we can see in this image, we start off with the one donor paraffin blocks, which is then assembled into separate tissue cores, and this allows us to have a multiple histological analysis. We then, the proteins that we saw were in question, we stained them with the help of immunohistochemistry, which enabled us to follow and study the proteins. So immunohistochemistry is a process that involves selectively identifying specific antigens in a cell by exploiting the antibody-antigen relationship. As we can see in this image, in the middle row, we add a antibody or a secondary antibody that then combines with the specific antigen um, in it and then we can add in a substrate for a color to develop, which can then be seen under a microscope. This enables us to easily study and follow these specific proteins. So for statistical analysis, we used a scoring process and the Mann-Whitney test. So with the help of the scoring process, the team was further able to identify and prioritize specific cancer proteins. And this was achieved by uh, generating a specific S-score. So basically what happens is that we give our results to blind pathologists who blindly then make a S score and they help us score um, the results. And the score they develop um, essentially was that they give us a number that correlates with 
the expression. So zero means none, one means weak, two would be moderate, and a three is strong. We then analyze the correlation of these proteins with ARMS using a man Whitney test. Now I'll be walking us through the specific results in detail that were obtained. So when we um, saw the correlation between BIP and IRE1, we could see that there actually is a significant expression of BIP in ARMS cells compared to those of normal skeletal muscles or the control group. As we can see through this graph right here, so there is a moderate to strong expression of BIP in ARMS compared to the normal skeletal muscle where there's a very weak to moderate expression. This hence shows that there actually is a significant expression of these proteins in ARMS cells itself. Next, we saw the correlation between IRE1 and ARMS. Once again, we could see that there was a moderate to weak expression of this protein in ARMS cells compared to the normal uh, skeletal muscles of the control group where there's no expression at all, hence showing there actually is a significant um, expression of this protein in ARMS cells alone. And finally, when we tested for XPPS, once again, we could see a moderate to strong expression of XPPS in alveolar RMS, while the normal skeletal group or the control group had no expression at all. Let's conclude that when we compared the um, when we compared the percentage intensity of these proteins with that of ARMS cells, we could see that there are high levels of these proteins in the ARMS cells when when compared to the normal skeletal muscles group. Therefore, we can say that these proteins are upregulated in ARMS cells as compared to skeletal muscles because they are present in much lower levels. And these cells or these proteins help cells to survive in ARMS cells um, as they're present in very high levels. This is very exciting knowledge for us because we are the first group in the world to have discovered this and this knowledge can further help us in many ways. So the future study plans involve that with the help of this knowledge that the IRE1 arm is highly active in the ARMS cells, and we know now that it contributes to the growth, we can use this in the future studies in order to inhibit the IRE1 arm while we activate the PERC arm, which could potentially lead to new and effective therapies of ARMS. By activating the PERC arm, we would essentially be telling cells to stop growing or to die. And with the help of this knowledge and combination of inhibition of IRE1 and activation of PERC, we could come up with new therapeutic strategies and options to help those suffering with ARMS. The authors acknowledge the Children's Hospital Research Institute in Manitoba for funding this project. Thank you for taking your time to listen to me.